Visualizing blood flow through the heart can be challenging for a lot of students. For this reason, I want to paint a picture of what these chambers look like on the inside and how the various structures relate to the function of the heart. As we go through this video, imagine you are a teeny tiny red blood cell flowing from one chamber to the next. Oh, the things you'll see. Starting at the right atrium, we can see the superior vena cava on the superior aspect, the inferior vena cava on the inferior and posterior aspect, and the opening to the coronary sinus inferior to the inferior vena cava. You will notice in the right atrium there are distinct ridges referred to as the pectinate muscles. These muscles extend from the atrial appendage and all along the anterior surface of the atrial wall. On the interatrial septum, you will see a small oval depression called the fossa ovalis. This structure represents the closure of the foramen ovale, which is present in the embryological heart to allow blood to flow directly from the right atrium to the left atrium. If the foramen ovale fails to close after the baby is born, this can lead to a reduction in cardiovascular efficiency and increased pressure in the pulmonary vessels. As the oxygen-poor blood travels from the right atrium to the right ventricle, it must pass through a valve. This valve is one of the two atrioventricular valves called the tricuspid valve. You will notice that this valve has three cusps, which explains the origin of its name. Attaching to each of the cusps are strong connective tissue fibers that look like little strings. You know the saying, you're pulling on my heartstrings? Well, that has nothing to do with this. These heartstrings are referred to as the chordae tendinae. The chordae tendinae attach the cusps of the valve to the papillary muscles. The papillary muscles are cone-shaped muscle projections that arise from the inner surface of the ventricular wall. Since the chordae tendinae are directly connected to the cusp of the AV valve and the papillary muscles, the chordae tendinae work to limit the movement of the cusps and ensure that the valve is opening one way. This prevents backflow of blood back into the right atrium. If we look at the walls of the right ventricle, we can see irregular muscle ridges called trabeculae carniae. Additionally, we can find a muscular ridge that connects the inferior portion of the interventricular septum and the anterior papillary muscle. This structure is called the moderator band. The moderator band is an important structure for the electrical conduction system of the heart to ensure the electrical events that trigger contraction are occurring quickly and efficiently. As we flow into the right ventricle, superiorly, we will notice that the walls taper to form a cone-shaped funnel called the conus arteriosus. At the end of the conus arteriosus, we find our first semilunar valve, which is called the pulmonary valve. This valve separates the right ventricle and the pulmonary trunk. Like the other valves in the heart, it also serves to ensure the one-way movement of blood through the heart and prevent backflow. As we enter the pulmonary trunk, we will see that it branches into the right and left pulmonary arteries. These vessels will then enter the hilum of the lung and the blood will make its way through the pulmonary circuit and become oxygenated. Are you still imagining yourself as a little red blood cell? Because you should be. Our next stop in this adventure is the lungs. In the lungs, we're going to have to squeeze through the smallest of capillaries in order to pick up oxygen for the rest of the body. Are you up to the task? Thanks for watching. For more educational videos, subscribe to the West Coast University channel below.